Welcome to section 49 of Bacteria. In this section, we will be discussing Gardnerella vaginalis. So let's get started. This table shows the list of all the bacteria you need to be familiar with for step one. Looking at the other category, we can see Gardnerella vaginalis right here. Our scene for Gardnerella vaginalis takes place in a garden of someone's backyard. Garden for Gardnerella vaginalis. And this story is kind of like a game of Clue. This poor person has been murdered, and these two people around the scene are trying to figure out who committed the murder. In this way, the dead body is like a clue cell. Clue cells are found on microscopy of patients with Gardnerella vaginalis. They're simply epithelial cells that have sloughed off the vaginal wall. So again, this body is like a clue to the nefarious crime. So it represents clue cells. Now clue cells have stippled edges. The body of this poor victim has been decaying. As it decays, her skin has been wasting away and getting this rough stippled appearance on it. So the rough skin on the decaying body represents stippled edges on clue cells. Now this is a histological specimen showing clue cells and you can see the stippled edges around these cells. Now you can tell that the body has just been resting here lifeless for quite some time now. She is completely gray and decaying. This gray skin will help you remember that the vaginal discharge in these patients is gray. Now notice how one of her gray stippled legs is dipping into the nearby garden pond. Her decaying body created so much potency that it killed the fish. And you can imagine that these nasty dead fish on the surface of the water are creating quite a nasty smell. You can almost see the stink that they create. Anyways, these fish will help you remember that the gray vaginal discharge often smells like fish. Now we may have identified the murder weapon. You can see this yellow shield laying next to the victim. It must have been used to smack her over the head, which is likely what created that big lump that we can see there on her head. Well, if you look closely at the shield, you can see it has this flower on it, a flower that kind of looks like a vagina. The fact that the vagina is represented on the shield emphasizes the idea that the vaginal inflammation is painless. And preventing pain is the whole purpose of shields after all. So again, vagina on a shield represents painless vaginitis. Now look at these roses she is resting on. Now roses are an important part of every typical garden. The good ones anyways. And these roses represent the idea that Gardnerella vaginalis is part of the normal or typical vaginal flora. While Gardnerella is part of the normal vaginal flora, it can become problematic when the organism becomes overly abundant within the vagina. This is the pathogenesis of the disorder which ultimately results in bacterial vaginosis, and it causes that inflammation, which leads to the symptoms the patient experiences and notices. Now the normal looking garden, which has roses, like any good garden, stands for normal vaginal flora. Now notice these gross little garden bugs making themselves at home on the gray victim. They are various colors, some are blue, some are red. These variably colored bugs represent the fact that Gardnerella vaginalis is a gram variable bacteria. They can be gram positive or gram negative or most commonly somewhere in between. Now this poor cleaning lady is tidying up the garden only to find this dead body. She is plugging her nose there because of all the fishy smell coming up from the dead fish pond. Anyways, this cleaning lady represents clindamycin, which is one of the antibiotics used to treat Gardnerella infections. So cleaning lady for clindamycin. As a cleaning lady, having appropriate supplies is important. So she has a bottle of bleach with her, as you can see next to her feet. She is going to need a lot more than bleach to take care of this mess. But if you look closely, you can see that the pH is listed on the bottle and it reads greater than 4.5 which indicates a higher pH than normal vaginal flora. This pH label represents the idea that vaginal flora is higher than 4.5 in these patients. It's also important to know that bleach is an alkaline chemical, which has a high pH. So the presence of this alkaline bleach will help you remember the pH of vaginal discharge in these patients is higher than normal typically above 4.5. I think we found the murderer of our story. We can see him escaping on the nearby metro. Look at him laugh. He thinks he's gotten away with it. Now this woman is even pointing at him, assuming he's guilty. Anyways, the fact that he's escaping on a metro represents metronidazole, which can be used in the treatment. So to summarize treatment, there are two antibiotics to know with Gardnerella vaginalis, metronidazole, as represented by the metro, and clindamycin, as represented by the cleaning lady. So now that we've covered everything, let's do a question to reinforce what you've learned. A 29-year-old female presents to the physician complaining of vaginal discharge with a fishy odor for the past four days. The physician obtains a sample of the discharge for laboratory tests. Following microscopic examination, the lab does not identify any fungi, protozoa, or bacteria foreign to the vagina. Epithelial cells covered with normal vaginal flora were seen. What is the likely pH range of the patient's vaginal discharge? Now hopefully you've noticed that this describes Gardnerella vaginalis. We are told that there is a fishy smelling vaginal discharge. Then we are told that there is no evidence of fungi, so we're not thinking that this is candida, and there's no protozoa, so we're not thinking this is trichomonas, and there's no bacteria foreign to the vagina. However, there are epithelial cells covered with normal vaginal flora, and Gardnerella vaginalis is normal vaginal flora. In any case, these epithelial cells 
our dead giveaway for clue cells. Recall that these clue cells are simply epithelial cells, and they're just covered with these gram variable rods, which are, of course, part of the normal vaginal flora. And it's these rods that cause this stippling appearance. Anyways, now that we're confident we're dealing with Gardnerella vaginalis, what is the likely pH range of this patient's vaginal discharge? Going back to the image, we can see this bottle of bleach with a sign that reads greater than 4.5, meaning the pH is greater than 4.5. And with that, you've learned all the details you need to memorize for Gardnerella vaginalis.